Want to add products to your Google Merchant Center account without needing to create a whole feed? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video, let's go. Okay, so as I walk through this process in a minute, you're gonna see that I recommend a lot of other videos to watch about how to optimize each part of the process. I'll leave a link in the description to each of those videos, so make sure you check them out because there's a lot of little branches where you're gonna learn how to do stuff like optimize your product titles, optimize images, optimize your product page, things that are really gonna come in handy if you wanna scale up your Google Shopping campaigns. Without further ado, let's get into my computer and I'm gonna show you how to add your products to Google Merchant Center. Let's go. Hey guys, Sam here. I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to add products to your Google Merchant Center account without having to set up a full feed from your Shopify store into Google Merchant Center. So you can go into products over here and usually you'd create a product feed, but you can just create one product in here at a time, add them in, and it's gonna ask you to fill in the product details here. So you make sure you choose the country of sales. So I'm gonna put Australia, you can put the US, UK, or whatever country uh, you're selling those products in and where it's gonna go. So it's gonna to go to the shopping ads. Okay, cool. So the product identifiers. So it's gonna be um, basically the GTIN or the, the UPC This is basically the, the identification number for this product. So like similar to ISBN, which is for books, you probably have a GTIN, which will be, um, the actual identification number that's like the barcode number basically. Um, some often uh, you might not have this, you'd, you'd have to get this from your supplier, but what you can also do is put in an MPN instead, as long as you also have the brand. So if you fill in the brand and the MPN, it's okay, you don't need the GTIN. Uh, but I recommend getting the GTIN if you can, especially if it's a new, if it's uh, if you haven't sold much of this product before, because what that allows is if someone else around the world is selling that same product, the same GTIN from the same supplier, for example, and they have shopping reviews, the stars on their actual ads um, approved and implemented on their shopping ads, you'll actually get those, their reviews shown on your ads, which is pretty cool if you're just starting because you don't have to go through that whole process of collecting all those first reviews initially and then getting them approved, getting it all set up, which is a real pain in the butt. I've got a whole video on that. Um, I'll put that in the description, but basically, yeah, so you can put in their G, uh, the GTIN of the actual product and it will pull in those reviews. So the manufacturer part number, so let's put in something like uh, NA8. It's gonna put in some random um, letters there because that's that. it's not as strict, the MPN. It's really what, um, um, it can matter it can be for your own your own store but there's a lot more to get into there but basically yeah you can put anything there um the sku i recommend having this as something that allows you to identify the product this is really important when you want to later do google shopping ads and you want to look at look at the products in a campaign and bid on those individual products this is getting into some more advanced google google shopping stuff but if you want to start bidding on the product level, you wanna be able to know which products are which, especially if you have multiple products and those products perform differently, you wanna be able to uh, segment based on that ideal SKU. So I like to put, for example, something in, it's like in my store, I'm selling surfboards. So I might call this one key surfers. And then um, this might be the super fish S7. And that's the only one I'm selling of that, that type. Um, that's just the name of the product basically and it just keeps it there so i know when i look at it in the shopping ads what, exactly which one it is so it's going to be the superfish s7 so this is the actual title of the product there's a whole this is where you need to do a lot of optimization i'm going to fill it in quickly now but i'll have another video in the description about how to optimize your your product titles for shopping this is really 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 important to making sure you have a good title uh, what I would do here is really think about and build out the title based on a formula, as well as using what people are searching searching with in the search results. For a product like Superfish, it's a specific surfboard that is designed by a famous surfer and everyone knows about it. So I would actually make sure that the name is right there. But if it's your own brand and your own products, people don't know what the heck your special product is um, unless they've heard about it before. So what you can do is add extra language in there that describes the type of product it is um, so it's in the title. And this can be different from what's actually on your Shopify store. So this allows you to keep the feed 
and what's on Merchant Center and shopping ads different from what's on the store because your store is in the context of your store. And so the title can be something different there that makes sense there. But if people saw that on its own, it wouldn't really make sense. Anyway, so there's a whole video on that. I'll put that in the description too. I recommend checking that out. Brand, this is gonna be your brand name. So for me, I'm, I have the key surface brand. Description, this is a whole, so you've got 5,000 characters. This is a whole thing. There's a lot of stuff to go into here. What I would do for your description is you can pull in whatever's on your website and what you've you've written out there. Just make sure that your description has more about what the product is, how it is used, and any other information that can really help your customers decide whether this is the product for them, whether they would actually need this product and use this product, um, as well as benefits. Like on the website, you would have maybe videos in the description, shipping information. You basically just wanna include the information there that basically can tell Google and people, uh, customers on, on Google Shopping, more about your product. You'll see that when you go to the shopping ads, to see the description in shop Google Shopping, you have to really click through a multiple number of times to actually see the description. It's kind of a bit hidden, but the important thing here is that you're trying to tell Google exactly what your product is because there's no keywords in shopping. As you'll, as you'll soon learn, if you haven't set up shopping ads yet, check out my other videos on, I take, take you through exactly how to do everything. Um, but there, Google doesn't have keywords. What they do is they look at this information here and they try and figure out what the heck your products are. So yeah, so I'm gonna put in here, um, the super fish surfboard, yeah, fantastic. Begin, this is a lie, but I'm gonna put it in here. Beginners, surfboard. Um, six feet in length and great for those big swell days. Put in a lot of stuff here. Basically, what are people using to search for your product? This is a terrible, like, you know, this isn't the best example. Um, I'm just putting in so I have something in there for now. But you see, there's a lot of characters there. I would recommend at least 500, word, uh, 500 characters if possible just to really give Google enough information. This is gonna be a link to your actual product page. So you're gonna to go to your Shopify store and get that, um, that product right there. So I'm gonna to go to my products and I've added this one in into my shopping, shopping store. Here it is. So I can actually go to the product page here by clicking that little little um, eyeball. Here's my product page. It's a terrible page. You know, this is just an example. Um, I've got another video where I take you through how to make a really, really good product page. And that's gonna be really helpful for you guys out there to improve your conversion rates. Let's go back to here. I'm gonna put that in here like that. Uh, to get your image, super easy. So make sure you choose an image that really does stand out from the competition. What I recommend doing is actually going to shopping and actually searching for other uh, the, the similar products. What are your competition uh, are using? So for example, if I go to Google myself, let's search for the products. So this is what people are showing in shopping. Okay, so they're all, you know, regular boards. They're all, there's different types of designs, um, different ones here, but that's the one right there. Um, and it has, you know, a white background. It kind of looks pretty boring to me. Like these don't stand out a lot. And it, you know, this depends on the, at the area where you're located. Um, and who's advertising there. But these these are pretty terrible ads in my opinion. Um, you know, that's a pretty terrible description even though that's pretty similar to what I'm putting now, but you know, you really want to um, build that out a bit more. So yeah, these are, it's, they're terrible. Like that's, you know, what I would do here is really, you know, you could mess with the background, make it stand out, maybe make a brighter, better quality image. This is a bit, you know, it's really a bit hard to see. It's, it's a bit dark. They've obviously just cut that out and put that on a white background. Um, what I've got here is I've got this image here, which I think is it does a better, it looks, I think that's gonna stand out more. What you can do is test out these images. So put in one for, to start with and see how it goes. But to get your image link, oh, I'm gonna go back to the, where I missed it, lost it. Where is it? Here it is, sorry. So I'm gonna, what I can do is right click it and go open image in new tab. I'm on Google Chrome, so it allows that. Right here, I have the image link. Copy that. I, this is this after the question mark. That's what uh, Shopify actually adds for themselves. Um, don't need you don't need that. Just get that uh, link there, and then go back to um, adding the product and paste that in as the image link. You can also drag to upload, but this is going to be much easier if you already have it on the site. Uh, but you can have a different image here. You don't even need to have it uploaded to Shopify, which is really cool. So yeah, here are the, the guidelines, uh, but there's a lot to do with images. Um, I'll probably have a video about that, so check the description too about how to choose a really good image. Uh, once that's done, go down here to pricing. So choose the currency, depending on where you're, you're selling that to, and this, you know, this is gonna play a role here with the country of sale. 
and then availability is really important so whether that's in stock or out of like uh, out, of, out of stock or pre-order make sure that that's updated google will actually check your website to see um see if it is up to date and condition you know new unless you're selling something that's used or refurbished put it on new uh, a power product that's going to ask for a lot of other stuff like sizing color gender all that sort of stuff so you're gonna have to make sure you add that in for each of these products but uh, this is uh, not apparel it's a surfboard shipping and tax so that's going to pull in from my account settings i've got another video on how to set up uh, shipping settings and tax settings um, in google merchant center i'll put those in the description too um, but you can also edit these on a product basis if you want to have different products that have different shipping settings that's totally fine you can just edit them there okay cool let's click save oh i've got an error price enter a valid va a value i didn't put a price in so this is going to be 599 oh 599 dollars click save let's see how we go Awesome. So there it is. Congrats. Your product is being reviewed by Google. It's now preparing. So let's go to all products and let's have a look. Cool. This is fantastic. So there it is in there. Let's see. It still needs to get reviewed. That's for the feed, the all products. Come on. Okay, so we have to wait about 30 minutes for, for it to update, but that is um, a full step-by-step -step guide for adding your products into Merchant Center. Very, very straightforward, and that does save so much time. You don't have to create a full feed like in the old days. I do have a lot of videos about creating the feed because it is very effective when you have more products and you want to make sure that your, uh, your products in shopping are actually updated when you change them on your website. That is important. So if you change something on your website here, it's not going to change here unless you've got automatic updates turned on, which is a whole other thing. And I'll put a link in the description to another video on that too. I make a lot of videos about Google shopping and merchant center and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's how you add products in. And if you want to add more products, you just click the plus, click, click the plus button up here and it'll go through the same process again. And so you can add more and more products. This does get a bit tedious if you have a lot of products. So if you have 50 products, you're going to be spending all night there. So I recommend using a feed. Um, but that's, you know, that's, I'll put a link in the description to a, to a video on how to set up your product feed. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions at all about what I've gone through today or any, anything else about e-commerce, leave a comment below in the comment section. I check every single comment and I respond to them all one by one. That's what I do. I want to help you guys out there set up your e-commerce stores. Um, other than that, if this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate that. That tells YouTube, hey, Sam Baldwin is making helpful content out there for his audience. Um, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.